In this video, we will be covering network communications in uh, single wire networks that Chevy, Chrysler, and Ford have, and also the two wire CAN network. We're doing the PCI bus today. This is everybody's favorite 2002 PT Cruiser. It uses a, a single wire network. It's what's known as a non-fault tolerant. That means if the there was a problem in the network where it shorts out in some one way or another, the whole network goes down. There's only one wire to communicate on, so when it goes down, it cannot communicate anymore. Um, what we're connected into is our breakout box for our DLC connector. It's just your standard DLC. Key is on, engine is off. This communicates on pin two. The chassis ground is what we're grounding off of there on the DLC. And what I've got is a little demonstration here to show you what happens when it, when it shorts out. And we can short these networks out without doing damage, just so you know. It rests at zero volts and it communicates by going up to seven and a half volts. And that's what our network looks like. I'm gonna give you a screenshot so you'll be able to see what's going on with the computer. Um, so you'll see a different view, but hopefully still hear my voice. We're on five milliseconds going right now. So what I've done is I found my pin that goes to the computer. It also goes to airbags and other modules in the vehicle all on the same network. This was the easiest one to access, so I just came to it. It's a purple with yellow wire, and I've just back pinned there, and I've got my trusty jumper wire here. So what we do is when the network shorts to, say, positive, It'll short just like that, and we'll just go to a flat line onto the full voltage, battery voltage, not the seven and a half volts. Then, same thing happens if we go to the negative, only it goes down to zero volts and stays there. Once we don't have the problem anymore, it's back up and running. This, this doesn't damage the networks. They fail this way all the time, so it's not going to damage it to do that. I, I recommend that everybody when they're doing network testing to learn what it looks like when networks have a problem. So the best way to do that is before the car comes in broken. And so I suggest doing this kind of test where you come in, you short the two wires together. If it's two wire, you short one to ground, short the other one to ground, short the other one to power. So you can see how they act and sometimes it doesn't act like you'd expect it to so the only way to know for sure if you have it right is understanding how it's going to act is to do that test before they come in broken okay for this part of it we're going to cover the gm class 2 this happens to be an 05 pontiac grand prix leaking vital fluids that's why it's here today but we're going to go over the class 2 da data network we're on pin two, and we do have our pulsing. We are connected to the DLC, just like we were with the Chrysler and the PCI data. So come over here, I'm hooked into the ABS, just like we did the other one, so we can do the same test. The way this works, it goes uh, zero, where it rests, and it goes up to seven volts to communicate, so you can see the data going across there, that dotted line is seven volts. Now we're gonna do the screenshot again on this one. So I'll restart this and start up. Now here is our trusty jumper going over to our ABS module in the network. And when we go ahead and put it on the power, you can see that it goes full 12 volts, well above that seven volts that we had on our communication line now nothing can communicate because we're shorted to power same thing here when we go short to negative it goes down to zero it can't communicate anymore actually I have one more piece to note on this that is how we can isolate different modules from the network so what this uses is a splice pack a comb that connects all of the wires to all of the different modules they're located in different spots in different cars. This one here happens to be right up here by the DLC. And it's this part right here. And that's a little comb that connects all of the different wires. Our purple is the one that goes to our 
DLC connector. The light blue one is the one that goes to the ABS module, so on and so forth. What this does, if I can get it released here, one-handed, it looks like this. All it does is just connect all of the wires together on one bar. So if you wanted to diagnose, say you had something that was grounding the circuit out and you wanted to find out which circuit it was on, you'd pull this out and you'd jumper from your DLC, the purple wire, and one at a time you'd go across those until you found the one that was doing it and chase that circuit. It's a pretty neat design that GM has. Just so you know about it. Okay, in this one we are going to be covering a couple of different networks that Ford uses. Um, this is an 05 F-150. It uses a UBP, which is a UART based, and an ISO, and also a little bit of CAN. We're not going to be covering the CAN on this one. That will be on another vehicle. But we use uh, pin 3 and pin 7. Pin 7 is labeled ISO, that is our ISO. The UBP is on pin 3. Now, what we got here, the, this is different than the other ones we've looked at before. These rest at 12 volts and communicate by pulling down to zero. Now, you'll see we have nothing on our channel A, which is our ISO. Now, we have to actually go to the scan tool and talk to it to get it to start communicating. So the airbag is the only thing on this module or on this network on this vehicle. So we just turn on it and the scan tool and try to communicate with it and all of a sudden there's our data. That is uh, basically all I wanted to cover on this with you. The, I'm not going to ground out or put power on these. Uh, it's the same thing as what the others are. It's kind of redundant at this point, but they do function essentially the same when you do that with uh, shorting them to power and ground like the Chrysler and the GM. All right, this is where we cover CAN network systems. This happens to be a 2008 Lexus ES. CAN network systems have two wires as opposed to the single wires that we've been looking at before. These are fault tolerant, meaning that if one of the wires goes down, the system can still communicate on the other wire. We are hooked in to pin 6 and 14, the DLC and the ground, chassis ground for our ground. What happens with this one that's a little different, we're looking at voltages that are different. Now the others would start at zero and go up or start at a higher voltage and go down. This one starts at two and a half volts on both the high and the low. The high, the high side can goes to three and a half volts. So there's a one volt change up and down for the communication. And the low starts at two and a half volts and goes down to one and a half volts. Also one volt change. And it's very fast. This is substantially faster than we were looking at with the other systems. And you can see how much data is flying across the screen there. We're going to be doing the same test that we did before. I've hooked into the ABS the high and the low and we're going to ground and give power to both those wires and see what happens. We're also going to short those wires together so that we can see what it looks like when the network wires touch each other when they shouldn't be touching each other. So we're going to start off, this one is connected to my high side, my can high, and we'll just touch the battery power and look at what the pattern does. And then we're going to go over and we're going to do the same thing with the negative side. Then we're going to take the high, the low side and we're going to go to the battery here, positive and negative. Now we're going to connect the two together. 
This is why we need to do this test so we can understand what these patterns look like when we go to see them. Okay, this is the part where we talk about the terminating resistors in the CAN network. Um, you have two 120 ohm resistors wired in parallel with these systems. When you have that, uh, two 120 ohm resistors wired in parallel, you should see 60 ohms right here on the DLC. We're using pin 6 and 14 and Advantage Pro has 60 ohms. One thing to note here, you want to make sure the system isn't communicating while you're doing this test. So you could either disconnect the battery or wait till it goes to sleep.